Hey guys, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I'm refilming my intro because I just got two really adorable kittens and I need some names. Please throw some in the comments if you have some ideas. Look at these two little kittens. Oh my god, they're so cute. Speaking of kittens, today we're going to be ranking the top 10 zombie infection films. But first, I'm going to need you guys to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Alright, now let's get into it. Coming in 10th place is Night of the Living Dead. And yeah, I know a lot of you film snobs just shrugged and went, Oh God, he put it at 10th? What the hell, man? That's like the best zombie movie ever. It's not. You're wrong. It deserves to be on this list, but that's it. This film is the zombie movie, the one that started it, of course. Um, this is kind of the first film that introduced the modern zombie as we know it today. Before that, zombies more related to like voodoo back then, but this was more the, the first film that had to deal with like the infection aspect of it, and that's why it has to make it onto the list. I mean, personally, it's I don't think it's aged as well as some people think it has, but it's still a pretty good film. I think it deserves to be on the top 10 list just because none of these other films would even exist without this one. Coming in ninth place is Return of the Living Dead, and I know what you're thinking, is this a Romero film? It is not, actually. Common misconception about it. You can't just kill a zombie in this movie. It turns into a goddamn skeleton and starts talking about eating your brains. Another fun fact about this one, this is also the first film where zombies wanted to eat brains instead of just human flesh. Kind of interesting. Take it to the bank. Coming in 8th place is Dawn of the Dead and Hell. You know what, I'll put both of them right here. The, the remake or the original. I like both of them. For the infection aspect though, um, in the remake, I think one of the creepiest, scariest scenes, maybe even in a horror film in general, is just the, the little girl coming in, into the parents' room and just biting the dad's neck out. That, that horrified me. And it, as a kid, that was one of those images that just stuck with me for the longest time. This film's interesting because the setting is almost a character as well, on top of the already pretty interesting cast of characters. Both films, I'd say, that both takes place in a mall of some sort. This one's a really fun watch overall, though, both films. I prefer the 2004 one. A really good use of practical effects in both films as well, and if you're looking for just a good zombie movie, I can't believe you haven't seen this one, but uh, check it out. Coming in seventh place is Day of the Dead. I know you're getting sick of these Romero films, don't worry, we're done after this one. Now, Romero is the visionary of just all zombies in general. Basically, he basically he created the modern zombie. I think this is his masterpiece, in my opinion. This is my favorite one of all of them. There's some great, like, visuals in this movie as well. Mostly what I'm talking about is the hands popping out of the wall in the dream sequence. I'm not gonna lie, I just wanted to include it because I was talking about Romero movies. The, the infection aspect's pretty much the same as the rest of the other Romero movies. Coming in sixth place is a movie you're probably sick of me talking about, Wreck. I finally ended up seeing this movie, um, by the way, there'll be a little card somewhere if you want to see top ten movies to watch in quarantine. I finally ended up watching this movie, though, this, uh, Wreck was also on the other list, um, but I'll tell you what, Wreck is way better than quarantine. Quarantine is basically just a shot for shot remake of Wreck with different people and in English. There's one shot of this movie and if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about. It lasts for three, four, maybe five minutes, I'm not sure, and it's just this guy rolling the camera and they walk upstairs and they like find this lady and she's infected and they, they take her down. It's just this insane, chaotic, long sequence. I mean, how, how, it's so hard to do that, especially with a found footage movie like this. It's just so hard. You gotta, you know, hide the, the microphones and the lights. It must have been impossible to film that scene. You gotta give respect to the filmmakers of this one. Coming in fifth place, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record at this point. 28 Days Later. Yes, I think this is a pretty solid zombie film. It's also a pretty good infection film, as I said in my other video. I'm starting to run out of movies here. This was like one of those first movies with the zombies like actually running instead of walking. I think it is absolutely stupid when zombies run, but this film is the exception in my opinion. One of the things I talked about in the other video, of course, by the way, is that card's still hanging out up here. You might want to check that video out. I talked about there's a scene in that movie where uh, an old there's like this old man character, if you've never seen it, I'm just gonna be general about it and he's like looking up and he sees a bird and he's picking it like a dead body this little droplet of blood drops in his eye and then he just like turns into a zombie in like 30 seconds it is freaky this movie really centers around the whole infection aspect of it a lot it's just like it's a really quick virus the zombies are fast because they're like still fresh they're, they haven't been dead for you know a longer time so I guess it makes sense why they can run I just I'm more of a slow zombie kind of guy you know I just like my I like to take it slow with my zombies you know what I'm saying 
Coming in fourth place is Brain Dead or Dead Alive. It has two titles, I don't know why. Now before Peter Jackson could destroy the One Ring to rule them all, he decided to kill some zombies. Brain Dead is famous for a lot of things. Once again, another borderline zombie comedy, but it's just so gruesome and horrifying that it's just, it's still horror. The different thing about the infection with this one is it's actually from like this crazy rabbit stop motion monkey, which I thought was kind of different and interesting. So I said, screw it, let's put it on the list. Not only that, but it's just one of my favorite zombie films. I mean, the one of the most iconic scenes from this film is the main character just picks up a lawnmower and just starts taking down a whole bunch of zombies like, like this, like. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. That's who doesn't want to watch that. It's just blood and parts Members going everywhere flying around the room coming in third place And I feel like I'm having some Mandela effect here is planet terror I thought it was terror planet for the longest time this film is just so bloody so gory It, it will satisfy anybody any gore hungry person's need for something disgusting This one is a little different with with its infection vibe as well because if you just get touched by some zombie blood You're infected like that, and then it's just like you're done. You're done so it's just it's, it's a little slower moving the infection too. It's not instant So I think that's a little scary too. You got to live with the fact that you, you know You're gonna die for like a longer period of time this film does a really good job of depicting that. Although it is very campy in the best way possible, I think Grindhouse films are just the essence of great campy movies, and this this is the best Grindhouse film in my opinion. Planet Terror has everything. Hot girls, people cutting up zombies with knives, machine gun legs. I mean, there, there's not much more you can ask for in a film. That, that's enough said. That's enough said right there about the whole movie. Coming in second place, and I'm not gonna lie, this one breaks my heart a little bit, but there is just one film that I think is slightly, oh so slightly better. Number two is Train to Busan. I think I think this is a perfect zombie film. There's not a flaw in this whole movie. Yes, I said the F word. It was worth it for this movie. Not only has it does it have great zombies and just disgusting blood and gore and all that, it's also like it's a really quick moving virus. It's just like you get bit and you're done in like 30 seconds. That's scary to me. That's really scary. This this is also running zombies as well. Another exception to the rule, I think. Train to Busan also has a great plot as well. It has like really emotional moments. It has funny moments too. You're gonna be shocked by this one, I think. It's I know, I know a lot of people don't like foreign films either but uh there's one rule with zombie movies i think the more foreign it is to americans the better the movie is <laughs> And coming in first place is my favorite zombie film of all time, Lucio Fulci's Zombie, which is uh, supposedly a sequel to the original Dawn of the Dead. I don't know, I don't know about that. Doesn't, that's just in the title. I think that was just a marketing strategy, if you ask me. Look, there's a lot of things I could say about this film that are fantastic, but there's two things that are just iconic about this film that, I, that make me want to watch it over and over again. The shark zombie fight scene. Have you ever seen another movie with a shark and a zombie fighting each other? I don't think so. A dude in a zombie costume actually went to the ocean and fought a real effing shark. I mean, he's fighting a shark, man. That's, what the fuck, man? That's dedication. The other thing is probably the one of the best uses of practical effects, maybe ever, is the eye scene. And if you've seen this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This girl's getting like attacked by zombies and she's like, she closes the door on them and they just break down the door and there's like this splinter sticking out of the door. And like the zombies are pulling her closer and they're just like, there's so many of them, they're overpowering her and they're just bringing her head closer and closer to the splinter and it's just slow, it's the slowest shot ever and it's just slowly going into her eye. They used an egg and poked it with a real splinter. It looks so real. I mean, it hold this this movie holds up real well to right now too. See this one if you haven't seen it though. It's definitely worth it. I know some people don't really like foreign films because like uh, they don't like reading when they're watching a movie. You just got to get over that because a lot of the movies on these on this list are foreign films and they're just they're fantastic. The best zombie movies are foreign films, the, uh, inarguably. Thank you guys so much for watching my video on the top 10 zombie infection movies. Um don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. If you're kind of getting sick of like the fake horror movie serial killers and you want to start talking about some real life serial killers, well have I got a podcast for you. Go on Spotify and check out Serial Killer Chronicles with a K and I'm even a part of it, so check it out. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at KilljoyJake1 and on Instagram at Killjoy underscore Jake. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there y'all.